In New Jersey, open public meetings law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the act, the Portly Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published on January 13, 2023 and posted on the district website at www.flboe.com, published in the board's designated online media newspapers, the Record and the Star Ledger, filed with the clerk of the borough of Fort Lee, and mailed to all persons, if any, who have requested said notice. Please be advised that this meeting is being taped and may be broadcasted on local TV and online at a future date. The Open Public Meeting Act allows for remote participation at board meetings and defines the word meeting as any gathering, whether corporal or by means of communication equipment, which is attended by or open to all of the members of the public body held with the intent on the part of the members of the body present to discuss or act as a unit upon the specific public business of that body. May we please have roll call? Ms. Joe, is action? No, no, I believe she's oh. participating remotely. Okay. Um, she may just uh, dial in for the private. Okay. Ms. Curry? Here. Dr. Kofnopoulos? Here. Mr. Knight? Here. Ms. Morell? Here. Mrs. Richter? Here. Mr. Rubino? Here. Ms. Dasser? Yes. And Ms. Cole? Here. Record all to show that Dr. Cabot is here. Ms. Notino, board secretary. Ms. Baker, assistant superintendent. I don't believe the attorney's here, right? No. I'm sorry, I can't like, really hear you. I can't really hear anything you're saying. If you can maybe speak a little louder, I don't know. I've got an issue with my ear yeah. today. Yeah. I think it's four or Yeah, that's me. Oh, yeah, okay, the board will be convening to executive session to discuss legal, personnel, and other confidential matters. The board will reconvene into public session at approximately 7.30 p.m. May have a motion to go into executive session. Motion. Second. Motion, Morrell. Second, Richter. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? We are now... The New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law was enacted to ensure the right of the public to have advance notice and to attend the meetings of public bodies at which any business affecting their interests is discussed or acted upon. In accordance with the provisions of the Act, the Fort Lee Board of Education has caused notice of this meeting to be published on January 13, 2023, and posted on the district website at www.flboe.com, published in the board's designated online newspapers, the Record and the Star Ledger, filed with the clerk of the borough of Fort Lee and mailed to all persons, if any, who have requested said notice. Please be advised that this meeting is being taped and may be broadcasted on local TV and online at a future date. The Open Public Meeting Act allows for remote participation at board meetings and defines the word meeting as any gathering, whether corporal or by means of communication equipment, which is attended by or open to all of the members of a public body held with the intent on the part of the members of the body present to discuss or act as a unit upon the specific public business of that body. May we please have roll call? Is Ms. Joe still remote? Yes. Yes. Mr. Curry? Here. Dr. Here. Mr. Knight? Here. Mrs. Morrell? Here. Mrs. Richter? Here. Mr. Rubino? Here. Ms. Stasu? Here. And Ms. Kolder? Here. The board convened in executive session at 6.30 p.m. tonight to discuss legal, personnel, and other confidential matters. 
Um, Dr. Kravitz, will you begin by sharing your superintendent's report? I believe we're gonna, you're going to give us the uh, budget presentation for 2324. Right. Okay. And then we'll do our. And we'll come back and do our student introductions. Sure. So tonight is a combined meeting. Um, the board will be presenting our superintendent, Dr. Kravitz, will be presenting our budget for adoption. And then we have our regular board meeting with uh, a number of resolutions. Ms. Colbeck. Thank you to everyone participating in Zoom land. To my left is Ernie Turner, one of our consultants. And I'd like to thank Dr. Vincent Aquino, who, by the way, this is his last meeting before our new um, administrator, business administrator starts on May 1st. And I'll also recognize our new assistant business administrator, who we will be appointing later, who's in our audience this evening as well. So this is our budget for the 23-24 budget school year. Uh, first slide, please. So the process, very simply. Click. There you go. So we start the budget preparation by meeting with the principals, supervisors, and directors. Uh, we discuss the needs, we discuss also the wants, the two different categories. We review the program proposals, staffing needs, and capital requests. The budget is then re reviewed through the Board of Education committees. We have preliminary approval of our budget on March 16th, which we are required then to submit to the county for review on, by March 20th. During that process, we include not only the financial figures, but also the narratives and the needs assessment of the district. The narratives include how will we will be spending the money, how will it support our educational systems, how will we fund any new initiatives, which include if it's a curriculum rewrite or anything of that nature. And the final approval is done by the Board of Education, and in this case, it's done by tonight, April 24th. Next slide, please. As you can see from our revenue sources, these are the tax levy over the last three years. In 2021-22, the tax levy was $69,575. In 2223, 70,967,334. And in 2324, the tax levy is 72,386,681, which is a 2% change. I will remind everyone that the tax levy is not our full budget. As you can see, there are other calculations that go into determining our full budget and our full revenue, things such as tuition that we would end up receiving, capital reserve withdrawal, which we will discuss, is also part of the budget. So that's why you may see the budget going up and down by significant numbers every year, and not only this district, but every district around the state, because as they add financial components, it could also include um, IDE grant, IDEA grants and any other revenue extraordinary aid, those help determine the revenue for each year. So the total revenue this year is down 3%. Next slide, please. One of the interesting things that you might hear a lot about in the news is, you know, the redistribution of the state aid for districts. So you'll notice between the 1819 and the 2324, the actual state aid numbers that Fort Lee receives have increased by over 16%. So when you see, and it was in the newspaper this year that there was some extra money that Fort Lee received, I just want to make it very clear, Fort Lee does receive that money as extra state aid, and we are seeing that trend continue. And that's significant as we start to, again, develop our programs and look for additional revenue sources. Next slide, please. So the current appropriations, the current expenses, the capital expenses, special revenue, and debt service. So current expenses, that's your day-to-day -day operations. What you see coming in, whether it's payroll, whether it's your expenses for books, your lighting, your snow plowing, clearing anything, uh, all of that is your, your general capital current expenses. 
capital expenses. That's the money that we will use to fund some of our projects. And we'll talk about some of those projects in a few minutes. Special revenue. Maybe any of you would like to talk about what special revenue is. Special revenue is what's commonly known as Fund 20. And those are grants and, and uh, uh, revenue that's received by the school district for specific purposes. These grants can be either state funded or federal funded. And again, these are uh, discretionary grants. Uh, the amount of money for the 23-24 year has yet to be um, uh, determined. So as a result, uh, we budget at an amount of 85% of what we received in the current year. And then when the amounts of funding is actually um, been determined by the state of New Jersey, the budget will be adjusted to actual during the course of the year in the 23-24 year. And debt service is uh, the repayment of the debt on previously approved referendums. And the debt service is the repayment of the bonds uh, that the, the, uh, the district has issued down, down through the years. Uh, each year it varies uh, slightly uh, based on what the repayment schedule is on the debt service. And it's also affected by the amount of debt service aid that the state uh, issues to the district. So that, that can vary from one year to the next as well too. But, but basically it stays pretty consistent from one year to the next until the debt is paid off. Next slide, please. One of the things that many people ask always is the change year, to year over year, and where does the money go? So the regular programming, which is on the bar graph to the far right, you'll see the difference between the 22 and the 23, 23-24 change year over year. It's about 1.5% change. Employee benefits, we've seen an increase in the 13.2%. Um, as far as special education and maintenance of plant, you've seen a drop of less than 2%, 1.9 and 1.6. As far as out-of-placement uh, tuition, you've seen a slight increase of 12.6. Student transportation, we're seeing an increase of 9.5%. And admis admi excuse me, administration, a year-over-year year year change of 0.7% increase. Projected. 23-24. Next slide. So that, if you want to explain this one. Yes, this is a, um, uh, the calculation on the uh, projected tax impact on the average home in Fort Lee. Uh, if you take a look at the, the top line there, the net valuation taxable uh, for 21-22, 22-23, and then 23-24, you can see how the net taxable valuation has varied from one year to the next. And in 23-24, it was actually an increase of uh, approximately $60 million in uh, uh, net valuation uh, taxable uh, in Fort Lee. Uh, the average assessed valuation in Fort Lee has gone from 472,100 to 475,200 to for 23-24, it is $478,000 even. In effect, that is the same piece of property in Fort Lee, but it shows how the value has increased from one year to the next. Uh, based on that calculation, uh, the property tax increase then, based on that average assessed value of $478,000, uh, you can anticipate an increase of $85.41 in the tax bill for the school tax levy um, for the school year in 23-24. And again, the general fund tax levy is increased at a, at a rate of 2%, and the debt service tax levy increases at a 0.002%. And as I mentioned before, that debt service tax levy is approximately the same from one year to the next with just a uh, minor changes based on the repayment of the school bonds. Thank you, next slide. So we've discussed in previous meetings and with uh, in committees, we've talked about the staffing impact, because that's the most significant impact in every budget. So as of today, we are projecting uh, two preschool teachers for our preschool program, one special education teacher and one maintenance employee. I will say that, and as we've met in committee, we've discussed, one of the things we are doing with our budget is a complete forensic audit, determining where all of our line items are. 
and determining exactly how much money we have in each category so that we can best serve the students staffing. Our goal will be to look at the staffing number again once we are once our budget is approved and determine what our if there's any way to increase some of the programming that we've talked about with new committees. Next slide, please. The capital reserve projects. So in the 23-24 proposed capital reserve projects, we're looking to an 18 to 21 year old program, a high school shop and training program. We are purchasing Tom Hunter Road, 308 Tom Hunter Road, which will be part of our preschool program, as well as the 18 to 21 year old program, and the Lewis F. Cole Academic Wing Unit Replacement. That will be the air conditioning for the academic wing of the middle school. And we'll talk about that in one moment, the air conditioning projects. So the total capital reserve withdrawal. Now, these projects have not been awarded. These projects are the projected for the 23-24 school year. Once the budget passes, once we determine all of the money, then we would go out to bid, make sure all of those things, would, all of the bids would meet our specifications, and then we would award those bids, and the projects would happen somewhere between the, ideally, the 23-24 school year. Sometimes projects do linger and go into the summer of that 24 school year. Next slide, please. <coughs> So the 22-23 and the 21-22, there were, there were some projects, and I just wanted to give an update because this was some concerns that were brought to my attention. So the Fort Lee High School window replacement was in the 21-22 school year. That is 100% complete. The school one window replacements, 100% complete. School two mason error repointing, 100% complete. The school three boiler replacement, 100% complete. The school one VFR HVAC, which is the air conditioning unit, it is operational, it has been turned on. There is a punch list, which is a list of things that there are some uh, specifications that are not meeting temperatures in certain rooms they are working on. It has training that goes with it to our custodial staff so they learn how to operate our program, out of the program, because it is all computer based. And it's called commissioning, which is making sure everything is running in a timely manner and all of the temperatures are balanced. Those are the three remaining things left for the school one air conditioning. The school three air conditioning, it is operational. It has been turned on in the same manner. There is a punch list of certain items that have not been to our specifications. There's some training that will be taking place for our custodial staff and then it will be commissioned. The Fort Lee High School VRF HVAC, we are waiting panels. There is a nationwide shortage of electrical panels that are um, causing a delay for the Fort Lee High School VFR HVAC units to be operational. There are window units in some of the classrooms that are still operational, but we are, everything is complete. The ductwork is complete. Everything except for the panels, which will be all tied in. We are hoping for something sooner, but at the latest, by June 30th, we are hoping for something sooner. The Fort Lee High School second floor <coughs> curtain wall window replacement, that is in the back of the library, that is expected completion into the 2023 school year, ideally the summer. The Fort Lee High School locker replacements, they are 80% complete, and they will be 100% completed this summer. They've already gone out to bid. Everything is there in process. Next slide, please. The two additional air conditioning projects, the middle school gym, the RF and HVAC, all of the duct work has begun. They uh, have all of the units in stock, and it is expected to be completed this summer. The middle school gym, VRF, HVAC unit, as well as the high school athletic suite, which includes locker rooms and the gyms, will be completed this summer. All of the material is here. We are just waiting to finalize all of the, start to install when there is no one left in the building. But all of the materials are here for the high school gym. So going back to our 23-24, which is next year's budget, will be the academic wing of the middle school, and then all of the district will be completed for air conditioning. Next slide. 
So the next couple of slides will be dedicated to how the budget supports our curriculum and our instructional programming. So first and foremost, the budget supports all of our instructional and support staff. So by support staff, we're talking about our related service providers, our OT, PT, speech therapists, as well as our paraprofessionals, and that is the majority of our budget. You cannot implement an educational vision without staff, so that's the first bullet. Um, the budget also supports all of our existing as well as new instructional programs and that includes our academies at the high school, it includes all of our intervention programs, it includes our gifted and talented programs, our IB advanced placement programs, and the resources that are needed to run those programs. It also supports the alignment of all our curriculum to the New Jersey Student Learning Standards. Each year we allocate a funding to curriculum writing. Um, in June of 2023, the State Board of Education will be adopting new English language arts and math standards, and so we will begin the curriculum mining process for those areas this summer, as well as updating additional curricula. Um, we also use the funds to support the sustainability of major resources, um, including STAR 360, that's our K-12 benchmark assessment system, Link it, that's our data warehouse system, and all of our digital programs and consumable resources, such as workbooks and textbooks that are used in our classrooms. We will be purchasing new tools, including Freckle and resources to support our intervention programs for next year. The budget supports all of our social, emotional, and mental health services for students. And then as um, you saw in one of our slides, there's an increased funding to support special education programs. Um, we will be adding staffing, our out-of-district tuition, related services, and transportation um, will have increased costs. And then also um, to support professional development next year, here are the bullets of some of the major professional development initiatives that we will be implementing. We will, be, we will continue to um, provide professional development in the areas of elementary literacy, um, our sheltered instructional model that we use for our English language learners. We will continue to seek professional development to support our intervention programs, our tiered systems of support, as well as all the other programs that we provide each year for social, emotional, and mental health. And um, we will continue to provide professional development to support diversity, equity, and inclusion. I would like to thank, and then we'll take some questions, I would like to thank all of the board members for meeting with me to discuss all of the, the, the concerns that I've had. I would like to thank Ernie Turner, Dr. Vincent Alkino, um, Diane Baker, everyone at Central Office, all of the staff who has worked very hard in crafting this budget um, as we are moving from a, a we had an interim BA, we worked to a full-time BA, and it was a lot of work, and including all the board members who have sat with me on multiple occasions and discussed and, and answered all the questions, and I really appreciate working with a team like this. So that being said, next slide. Are there any questions from the Board of Education? Hi, um, this is Elisa, actually. Um, just in light of uh, Paramus and breaking ground, um, you know, I, I, I'm all for a But um, given uh, they're going to be building that school, do you feel it's going to impact our shop and trade program that we're trying to implement here? So the only one of the programs will be shop and trade at the Paramus a new campus. The other two will not be, not, one is a welding, from my understanding, one will be a logistics, and out of my head, I don't remember the third one. They are limited in their number of students that they can receive from each, from the county. Um, will it have an impact? It, it could have an impact financially, but I think there is a need, and we will address the need for our students at Fort Lee for, for them to participate with us. Okay, thank you. Any other questions from board members on the uh, budget presentation? Do any members of the public, I know we don't have any present unless, no. um, if you use the raised hand feature, um, if you'd like to ask right now, it's strictly limited to the budget presentation. Um, does, does anyone have any questions on it in the public? Yes. Miss, pardon me. Uh, hey, chaos. Well, 
But while we're doing that, just so that we do it on a more formal basis, can I have a motion to open the floor to the public, strictly limited motion. to the budget presentation? Motion. Motion, morale, second, Stasu, everyone in favor? Aye. Any abstentions? Ms. Kahe Kehas, you've been promoted to panelists. Please unmute your microphone and feel free to share your video. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. I, I think you're muted. I unmute. Yeah, do you hear me now? We can hear you now. Go ahead. Okay. Um, Good evening, my name is Taya, last name Tessia, and I had a question. Um, I heard uh, the freckle, what does freckle mean on the budget? What is freckle supposed to mean? Freckle is a program um, for elementary students. It gives them the opportunity to access materials at their reading level and um, to individualize instruction to their ability. Okay, so thank you. You're welcome. Can I continue or should I wait until you open for the public? No, why don't, why don't you ask all your questions and then we'll respond to them. Okay, I just um, emailed the superintendent in regards to and the traffic division in regards to submissions to school number one. It had the driveway in a very bad condition when I passed by there a few days ago. And now uh, these kind so, of so the period right now, I'm sorry to interrupt you, is, is limited to the budget presentation. Then okay. we'll start our normal business meeting. That's all I had for right now. I'll talk to you later. Okay. Thank you. Do we have any other raised hands? Yes, we do. Mihail, you've been promoted to panelists. Please unmute your microphone and feel free to share your video. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Uh, hey, um, let me not the video. Hey, I'm Mihail Komanesko, and uh, I live at 254 Tom Hunter Road. I wanted to ask what's the referral program for k-12 to that was presented in the slide what's that about can you rephrase the question on the referral could you repeat your question um so in the slide for the budget one of the proposals was to fund the referral program for students k-12 to i wanted to know what's that about it, it, to support the implementation of K-12 multi-tiered systems of support and intervention and referral systems. That is our program we're using through Rutgers University. We're training all of our administrators and staff on how to um, address the, the learning styles of every student within a classroom. It's talking about differentiating instruction, instruction in the classroom. Uh, so that is the program we're currently moving towards as a multi-tiered intervention program in the classroom. So how would that function in practice? Let's say you have a class with 20 kids. How would you deliver that, you know, based on each individual child's needs? So within a classroom, um, a teacher can decide to differentiate in different ways. One of the ways can be through small group instruction. Another way uh, could be to um, perhaps give students different problems to answer. The intervention and referral services, we currently already have a process. Every district is required to have one. And it's the way, it's the model that we use to determine interventions or supports that a child may need. Whether it's in the classroom or a particular program outside of the classroom, like another intervention program. Um, and last question that I have, how would that translate into evaluation of said child? Would they have the same evaluation or would it, 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 would it also differ because now you're delivering a specialized uh, teaching to each child based on their needs, right? 
Well, it doesn't, it doesn't get factored in. The state of New Jersey requires us to differentiate. It's an administrative code for different subgroups of learners, um, for our English language learners, as, as well as our gifted and talented students. So we're actually required to do that by, by code. Okay, thank you. That was all my questions. Thank you. Thank you. There are no more raised hands for questions about the budget. Okay, can I have a motion to close the floor to the public? Motion. Motion, Morrell, second, Rubino, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? So that, that concludes our uh, formal budget presentation of the budget for 23-24 school year. That's correct. Okay. Thank you. We'll wait for our superintendent to get back in his seat. Okay, so we're going to start with our superintendent's report. Good evening, everyone, from the other side of the table. Thank you for attending tonight's meeting. I would like to take this opportunity to recognize that our new school three principal began today, Rebecca uh, Glover, Williams Glover. Uh, the PTA, the teachers, and all of the children welcomed her with open arms, and I will say it was a phenomenal event. Uh, a lot of balloons and a lot of smiling faces, and it's something that really makes education worth living when you see all the happy faces walk into a building. So we're very happy with that. Uh, I would also like to Welcome to of our student representatives from the high school, if they don't mind introducing themselves and talking a little bit about what's happening. Actually, before we do that, we should vote on the adoption of the budget. Okay. Okay. Um, so, may I have a motion to approve items 1F through 3F on the budget hearing agenda? Motion. Second. Motion, Morale. Second, Richter. Roll call, please. Ms. Stassu? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Dr. Kolpinopoulos? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Mrs. Morell? Yes. Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Mrs. Richter? Yes. And Ms. Colbert? Yes. Okay, thank you, everyone. And now we can go to our high school representatives. <laughs> thank you, Ms. Colbert. So, good evening, everyone. We are the representatives from the um, student council at the high school. My name is Cecily Lee and I'm in the 11th grade. Hello, my name is Abigail Ferron, I'm a junior. Okay. This past Friday, the Peer Outreach Service team hosted an ice cream social in honor of Autism Awareness Month. Over 100 students participated to enjoy ice cream in conversations with some, someone new. Michelle Chion was accepted to the New Jersey Governor's School of Science, a very prestigious program for rising high school seniors. She will be spending three weeks on the campus of Drew University, immersed in intense college-level research. Senior Raymond Lau has committed to continue his academic and football career at Wagner University. Senior Janelle Lewis has accepted a full scholarship to continue her academic and basketball career at Caldwell University. Tomorrow, the 11th graders will take the SATs in school and all non-testing students will have a delayed opening. Tomorrow, the 12th grade students will have an assembly on voter registration. On May 17th, the guidance department, police department, and student council will sponsor a career fair. And lastly, on May 18th, Fort Lee Police Department and the SAD Club will sponsor a drunk driving reenactment and assembly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you both. Um, additionally, I would again like to thank Dr. Aquino for his last three months of service. I would like to welcome Nadia Agresta, our new assistant VA, who's in our audience this evening. And I'm well, well, let's wait until we vote. Yeah. With, the, with the provision of the phone. Thank you very much, Ms. Colbert. But I would like to thank you all for, for being part of the team that helped develop this budget. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you for that report. Um, do board members, are there any committee reports? Do 
board members have questions or comments on tonight's agenda or any other topic? I know you're looking at, you're welcome to stay or you, you're, you, we would not think that you're rude if you leave. I see you both kind of signaling to me. We appreciate so you both taking the time to update us. Zoom land our students are leaving. <laughs> okay, uh, may I have a motion to open the floor to the public? Motion. Motion morale second. Second Curry, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, we'll follow our normal uh, protocol. We will hear first from any members of the public that are physically located at the Capitorium tonight. Then we'll take questions and comments from those participating remotely. For remote public participants, please select the raised hand button. Our district technology coordinator, Mr. Ruggiero, will recognize each community member in the order of the raised hands by lowering the hand. Please then unmute your microphone, state your name and home address for the record, and begin your comments. Please limit your comments to three minutes. Do we have any members of the public here that would like to speak tonight? No. Seeing none, do we have any raised hands? Yes. Okay. Ms. Keha, you've been promoted to panelist. Please unmute your microphone and feel free to share your video. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Ms. Keha? You may be muted. Here. Yes, I'm here. Good evening. My name is Saya. The last name is Keisha, and the address is 484 Main Street, apartment 540, New Jersey. Um, I had a question. Um, I saw that the property taxes have gone high for the school. Who has that up to? Who's raising them? The municipality or it's coming from the state? Can you repeat the question? Could you please state your question? The property taxes for the schools have gone high. Is that up to the municipality or the state of New Jersey? So the, the question is the property taxes, I think, if, let me restate it as I heard it. Um, the property taxes relating to the schools have increased and you're wondering if that's uh, the result of something that the state did or the municipality have, have i accurately summarized it correct that's correct okay so so the taxes property taxes are made up of three different components one of them is the school one of them is your municipality and one of them is your county taxes so they are this, this entity is responsible for the uh, the school part of it with a cap of a two percent cap to raise the taxes of the three entities we're the only one with the cap. Thank you. Um, I have email uh, tonight, actually. I just emailed an email in regards to some issues at school number one. It's a driveway on its side. It really needs cleaning, and um, the signs there are falling apart, and the sidewalk needs to be, need to be fixed. I emailed to the mayor and the traffic division and to the... Um, uh, superintendent um please kindly respond when you get that email um if you could just include those improvements in the upcoming fixing that you guys will do that would be great you have pictures on there too so i, I received your email 25 minutes ago i'm looking at it um we will look at the school and the one with the shopping carts i'm assuming that's near the school but we will look no, at the yeah, the, uh, ignore some of the photos if they don't belong there, but I deleted them. Um, it's one of the high school area, and the other one is school number one. Okay, we will contact the, the buildings and grounds department and take a look at those. Thank you for the pictures. Absolutely. Thank you very much, then. That was, that's all I had for tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, we have Ashley. Ashley, you have been promoted to panelist. Please unmute your microphone and feel free to share your video. Please state your name and address for the record. You have three minutes. Hi, everyone. How are you? 
I'm Ashley Hudson and I live at 2423 First Street. And I just wanted to piggyback on, um, on Dr. Kravitz as far as we were extremely elated to welcome Miss uh, Williams Glover to School 3. And she was definitely welcomed with a lot of smiles and we are extremely excited to see how far she's going to take this and we welcome her and we're excited to you know raise the bar and welcome diversity and also i wanted to just give a huge congratulations to the uh the high school students y'all are doing y'all's thing the three i wasn't writing quick enough but the three that are getting um the the uh how would I want to say, um, the opportunities to go ahead with their athletic career and even um, educational careers. Like, that's amazing. So hats off to the high school students and to everybody taking their SATs tomorrow. Y'all got this. Breathe deep. You got this. So best wishes on your future. That's all. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Ashley. I, I think your school are tigers, though. I'm not quite sure that those ears uh, reflected tiger. They're my little palms, and I have my school three shirt on. Okay, I'm ready. I'm ready. Can't I'm catch me. Shirt. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Do we have any other raised hands? There are no more raised hands. We have a motion to close the floor to the public. Oh, Ms. Colbeth, I would like to make oh. one statement about yes. school three and the new principal. I would also okay. like to thank Dr. Sharon Amato for working there for the last several months. She did a great job. And I, I really appreciate all the hard work that she did there with the staff and the students and gave it some stability. So thank you, Dr. Romano. Thank you. We're always grateful for Dr. Romano stepping in when we when we need her. Thank you. Uh, now I'll take the motion to motion. close the floor to the public. Motion. Second. Motion, Rubino, second, Morrell. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Then let's move on to resolutions. We do have um, an amended resolution for, I believe it's 2B, 2B and G. And I will read it. No, it's actually going to be 3 B and G. It is a new resolution. Um, and it reads as follows. Therefore, be it resolved that the Fort Lee Board of Education, upon recommendation of the superintendent, approves an amendment of the long-range facility plan to revise and add the projects at Fort Lee High School, 300 308 Tom Hunter Road, Annex, to school number two, and Lewis F. Cole Middle School per the attached list for State Department of Education approval. And the attachment um, is a report from the architects that lays out um, specifics relating to those projects that I just uh, identified. May I have a motion to approve items 1B through 4B? Motion. Second. Motion, Morrell, second, Richter. Roll call, please. Morrell and Richter. Could you be? Dr. Yeah. Goldman. Yes. Mrs. Curry. Yes. Mr. Knight. Yes. Mr. Rabino. Yes. Mrs. Morrell. Yes. Ms. Cho. Yes. Ms. Richter. Yes. Ms. Stassen. Yes. Ms. Colbert. Yes. May I have a motion to approve items 1, B, and G through 3, B, and G? Motion. Motion, Morrell, second? Second. Second, Stasu. Roll call, please. Ms. Richter? Yes. Dr. Golfinopoulos? Yes. Ms. Stasu? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Cho? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Ms. Morrell? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Colbert? Yes. May I have a motion to approve items 1 CUR through 3 CUR? Motion. Second. Motion, Morrell, second, Richter. Roll call, please. Ms. Richter? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Cho? 
Yes. Ms. Stashen? Yes. Mrs. Morrell? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Dr. Volkanopoulos? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Mrs. Colvin? Yes. May I have a motion to approve items 1F through 5F? Motion. Second. Motion Curry, second Morrell. Roll call, please. Ms. Curry? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Cho? Yes. Ms. Stassen? Yes. Mrs. Richter? Yes. Mrs. Morrell? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Dr. Golfinopoulos? Yes. Ms. Colbeck? Yes. May I have a motion Wait, to a... Ms. Colbeck? Oh, yes. Um, Ms. Baker is saying that there is up to 7F on the agenda. Mm -hmm. 7F? Uh, yes. I know. 7P. 7P, yeah. Forget it. Forget it. Okay. Um, okay, so may I have a motion to approve items 1P through 16P? Motion. Motion Morrell, second? Second. Second Richter, roll call please. Ms. Stassen? Yes. Mrs. Richter? Yes. Mr. Mrs. Morrell? Um, yes on everything, but I say no on 5P. Jack Cantley. Okay. Ms. Cho? Yes. Dr. Golfinopoulos? Yes. Mr. Knight? Yes. Mr. Rubino? Yes. Ms. Curry? Yes. Ms. Colbert? Uh, a big thank you to the four individuals identified in 2P through 5P that total 70 years of service to the district, and uh, reluctantly, yes. Uh, moving on, do we have any old business? Do we have any new business? May I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Motion, Rubino, second, Morrell, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Thank you all for tonight.